In this last step, we'll create our self-contained KMZ file. So delete your old place marks, then go to the castle folder, and load prog relative path dot KML. Click on it to make sure that the image is still working. And now, select it and then right click on the place mark, and then choose save as, and this time choose save as type KMZ. Then go to your desktop, make sure you're in the castle folder, and then we'll name this one prog2.kmz. Let's go take a look at that file. Go to your castle folder, and now you see that you have a prog2.kmz. I'm going to right click on it, and then choose properties. And that way we can look at the file size. You can see that this file is about 27 kilobytes. Well, if we check the original prog.kmz, right click, properties, this one had the image linked to off of the Google Pages account. And you can actually see that it's a lot smaller. In this case, less than one kilobyte, or 919 bytes. Prog2 is a lot bigger because our screenshot image is now actually inside the KMZ file. Let's open it up to make sure. I'm going to drag this KMZ file onto 7-zip. And now you can see that we have two things inside the KMZ file. We've got our doc.kml, which is also in our original prog.kmz. And now we've also got a files folder. Inside that files folder, you can see that we have our screenshot.jpg. Now, if you want to make sure that your KMZ file will work offline, go ahead and close Google Earth, and then turn off your wireless connection or disconnect your network cable. Here's my network connection, and I'm actually just going to disable it temporarily. If you quit Google Earth, when you restart, you'll get an error message saying that you can't connect. Click no to start Google Earth anyway. Since I didn't quit, I'm just going to switch back to Google Earth and try loading our KMZ file. First, I'll load the prog.kmz file. This one is pointing to the screenshot of an image on the internet. So as we fly down to the location, you can see that when I click on the place mark, the image isn't loaded because we're offline. But now if I go back to the castle folder, and this time log the prog2.kmz that has the image inside of it, when I click on this one, there's our image. Congratulations, you've just made your first KMZ for offline viewing. Keep in mind this principle works for more than just images inside your placemark descriptions balloon. You can actually use the same technique for image overlays. So for example, I'm going to add a new image overlay, and I have a picture ready on my desktop. Here's a simple outline of California. So if I load the image, and then click OK, and then I'm going to save this image overlay as a KMZ file. We'll call it California.KMZ. I can then go to my castle folder and then drag that California KMZ onto 7-zip. And if you look inside the files folder, there's that California PNG image overlay. You can also do the same thing for custom icons. So if I want to specify a custom icon, for one of these place marks, I can right click on it and get properties. And then I can click on the icon button to the right of the name. Let's move this up a little bit. And then if I click on add custom icon, I can browse just to a location on my desktop. In this case, I'm going to choose this logo.gif. And this is just a simple Google logo. Click OK a couple times, and now you can see that I'm using the Google logo for the icon of this placemark. And next I'll save this file as a KMZ. We'll call this prog2 plus icon. And then if I go to the castle folder and open up that file with 7-zip and check out the files folder, you can now see that I have both the screenshot.jpg from the description and that custom Google icon I'm using for the placemark. Now, when making self-contained KMZ files like this, just keep in mind that the file size gets a lot bigger because you're including all of these images. So it's appropriate for using when you want offline viewing of your project, or for when you're giving a presentation of your project because the files will load much more quickly from your hard drive than they will from the internet. 
But when you're making a project for a web audience, it's not a good idea to make a big self-contained KMZ because then they'll be downloading all of these images at once whether or not they click on all the place marks or not. In these cases, when you have hundreds of place marks, it usually makes more sense to put these images on a web server and then let Google Earth download those images as it needs them when the users click on the place marks. It's kind of similar to watching a streaming video off of YouTube versus downloading the entire movie at once. Congratulations, you're done.